Red sun comes rising out of the sea on the long, long road. And the bones of the ocean that land under me on the long, long road. Up the St. Lawrence to the Queen of the Lakes on the long, long road. And the waves of the water, the endless they break on the long, My name is Pauline Boudreau. I've been living in Duran for about uh, probably 25 years now. I uh, we came here first, and then I was at the. Uh, I used to work at the school, of, as a secretary, and then after that we. Uh, after I'd done that for about 10 years, and then the kids was start to go to school, so we moved to PEI. We stayed there for about five years. And then after that, my husband wanted to come back, and the kids wanted to come back, so we came back here. And, and we came back, no, we came back at Tanjinoar, in the Magdalene Island, the main island. And we stayed there for about three, four years, probably. And my husband wanted to come back to Andrew Island, so we came back to Andrew Island. And now we've been here now for about 10 years. And we have a store, and I have a post office. I'm the postmaster, and uh, I keep them busy. <laughs> you know, and in Inter Island, I said if you leave on an entry, you have to keep busy. For me, I have to keep busy, and I do every day. Yeah. What's a typical day at the post office and the store? Do you work in both? Yeah. yeah. So yes, I keep both sides. I. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, in the morning, I usually do my little work, and then after that, if somebody comes to the store, I jump into the store, and then I go to the post office, I'm there after 10 to 12. After 12, I usually uh, have dinner, and if somebody wants to come to the store, I jump in here, like, in the winter time, Like, in, in June, uh, I have one, a, co a worker that comes, and she works straight up to uh, the end of August. But before that, I do both of them all the time. And at night, and sometimes the little strangler comes at night and wants uh, something, so I usually come down anyway. I just don't really matter to me. It's just, I really think. Yeah, yeah so I guess I better go see. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Okay, have a good night. Sorry. I have always, uh, like, it's always somebody coming in and out, so I just, you know, you gotta be busy when you're living in here on the side. That's what I always say. I just make everything all the time. Like, I just, like, I make them little, little uh, dishcloth to wash the dishes with. That a lot of tourists come here in the summertime, they like it. And I have different ones. I have, uh, like, I do some stuff here. This year I done that. Is uh, diamond dots. So it's different pictures that I make and put them in the frame and sell them. And you know, I sometimes I I do them and uh, I do them and sometimes I just uh, sell t <coughs> sell tickets on it. And sometimes I have it for the church or whatever, like, you know. And then mostly now every every odd uh, now every two weeks we try to have bingo and stuff, and I try to work with them and try to, you know, make busy, keep busy. Do you have the chance to speak French much here on the island? 
yeah, in the summertime we have a lot of tourists and I usually speak French to them and yeah. And then sometimes people here want information or want to call them wherever and they can't get nobody to speak French to them or, you know, it happens that I, I speak for them. Yeah, I help them out. I mean, it's, it's sad sometimes because, you know, we talk about the unemployment office and some places that nobody speak French. Like I know Quebec said French is Quebecer, but Quebec said French, but I mean, for the people in English, it, it's sad because they have to call somebody to make an appointment for them and they have to be somebody there what, that speaks English and French with them. Like it's, like, you know, you're never been served better than by yourself. When you talk to the person yourself, it's easier than when you have, you know, second person in behind you because, you know, it's, that's just the way it is, I guess. Tell me about the food that you have in front of you there. What is that called? It's pet dessert, but different people put them different, different name. And the pet dessert in French, it, in English, like if I tra translate it in, in English, it's a uh, nun's fart. So it doesn't sound good, but I mean that tastes good. <laughs> A lot of things changed it like I mean uh, I mean we have no kids here that's a big change because kids makes the you know makes makes everything like when you go look in the window oh the kids going by we sometimes we were so glad and sometimes they when they in the winter time they have no school like there'd be no school in the weekends or or a long weekend they come over and we can tell oh the kids are home now and you know they're back and forth in the trucks and cars and you know it's but a lot of changes since But there's no more children because the school is closed and the school can only operate with so many kids. And last, for me, it wasn't, and the parents, even so some parents would say that, uh, last few years that it was some, I mean, it was a teacher, but it was mostly all her grandkids or she was related to them. Like, this is not, like, you're going to have, you want to have kids, but you have to have and different ones probably had different, you know what I mean? Some of them is high on math and some of them is low on whatever. Like, you know what I mean? And there's a lot, but it's no challenge for them. So it's not healthy for them to have a, you know, you have to have enough kids to to challenge with. Because if you get no challenge with anybody, you how would you, you know, improve yourself and stuff? And that's why it's, but I mean, it's sad when you, you close the school, you know, and now we decide, Cammy decide that they were going to take over and do the, and it's great because I find it's something had to be done with the building instead of letting it, you know, rot or, so it's good that Cammy could be able to pick it up and, and do what, you know, because right now if the museum is down there, well, that's more, you know, for sure. I mean, where the museum is now, that was my house before. We used to live there long, like when we first came here. But, uh, you know, it's it's just the way it is. It's, it's sad. And then, you know, now is the minister, but the ministers, it's every, every uh, I think it's every six, six times a week, six times a month, six times a year she comes. So, uh, but then we have lay readers. So it makes it up for the, you know, I mean, you know, it's, it's just the way it is. And Cammy plans to put a few things in the building. Yeah, and she plans on making a, like a, uh, a hall for if we have activities and stuff. And she's planning on make, using the, the, the museum down there. So that'd be great. And at the same time, if we could have a, like something like a hospital or something like, you know, we'd bring revenue to, to, uh, you know, to pay the worker or to pay the funding or to pay the, 
I roll what or whatever. Yeah. But it's great. And imagine ten years from now or twenty years from now, what do you see? I think myself, it will always be people on Entry Island. Some people don't even go too far right now, but some people does. But as we grow older, we always try to see stay home. So I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. How about your kids? Kids, kids. Yeah, it's really sad because, you know, a little island like this, it's, it's going to be more as a tourist. We don't want the tourists. Like, I mean, we want the tourists, but I mean, you know, it's it's a little island. It's it's good to keep it the way. Hmm. But we'll see. Because everybody's getting older. Like, most people is, uh, my God, is probably... Three, like, I mean, right now is more, but through the winter is probably three, probably four, was younger than 50 years old. And we're getting older. And I mean, you know, what's, I don't know what's going to happen to the island. Because now more and more people want to buy houses of the island. Like this, like this year, my, uh, my sister-in-law, my, uh, my husband's wa his father, he died in in January, and in a matter of a couple of days, he wasn't even on the island to be buried. That somebody wants to buy the house, like it's, and then two other houses was sold just like that. Like we wondered, what's going to happen? What's going? What what the people know that you know what I mean? I'm just thinking of the people. The people says what. The they know that we don't know what's going to happen. Late summer day and my love and I went walking. Over hills and fields we walked laughing and talking. Came across an old farmhouse standing broken and bare It used to be someone's home, now no one lives there And there's a red, red barn standing in hell together, together with nails and dust And, and a tired old massy had us all wires and rust and Weeds overgrown in a garden, garden sown with care it used to be someone's home, now no one lives there And through the crack in the window pane I hear the sound of the falling rain Another farm being left run down Another family moved into town Had a life that they tried to save But the banks took it all away Hung a sign on the torn screen door Nobody lives here no more They work their fingers to the bone Nothing left they can call their own Packed it in under lead and skies With just the wheat waving them goodbye Had a life that they tried to save But the banks took it all away Hung a sign on a torn screen door Nobody lives here no more Had a life that they tried to save But the banks took it all away Hung a sign on a torn screen door Nobody lives here no more